Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the service of worship of Metropolitan United Church. It's Father's Day, so we extend a special welcome to the dads and granddads. We honor our relationships with our fathers, whether they may be comforting or complicated or somewhere in between. And we remember the fathers and father figures who are no longer with us and who are on our hearts this day. For those of you who are new to this community, I will let you know that we are an affirming church, which means we are dedicated to providing safe space, companionship, and leadership opportunities to all people regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. We draw strength and hope from biblical stories of liberation, from the prophetic call to live justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with God, and from Jesus' witness to God's inclusive love. As Karen set up for us last week, the last three Sundays in June will be a celebration of diversity and also a lament for when we have not lived up to our prophetic call to justice. Last week we heard from leaders of the Black Clergy Network of the United Church and how systemic racism affects their lives and ministry. Next week we will explore our church's relationship to the LGBTQ2S plus communities in our Pride service. But this week, this week we will look at the vital and ongoing work of reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples of Canada. Our guest preacher today is the Reverend Lee Kern. Reverend Kern is the Anglican priest with the Toronto Urban Native Ministry. She is passionate about creativity, cross-cultural and interfaith solidarity, ritual practice, and the healing power of community. And we are blessed to have her inspire and challenge us today. We will hear and sing songs from our tradition, as well as a piece called Two Boats of Kin that I wrote during my time at Emmanuel College. This service has been coordinated by Met's Peace and Social Justice Committee, and you will see their faces and hear their voices throughout this service. Let us now settle our hearts and minds as we begin with our acknowledgement of the land. As we begin our worship service this morning, we wish to acknowledge that the land on which we live, work, and worship has been the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples for many thousands of years. From our various homes, we acknowledge the territories of the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewas of Georgina Island, the Huron-Wendat, the territory on which Metropolitan United Church stands was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. And as we remember our continuing responsibilities to care and share, may we be mindful of broken covenants and the need to make right with all our relations.
won't you join with me now in our invitation to worship? The words will appear across your screen. God of justice, we gather to share in God's dream of abundant life for all. God of free will, we gather to give and to receive gifts of deep wisdom, deep emotion, and deep love. God of creation, we gather with gratitude as a community to praise God, to seek transformation, and to celebrate the power of the Spirit, always moving within us and among us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Sacred space holding all silence. Silence holding the word of God, the word of God holding the truth. Truth for the world, holding every hope of life. Hope of living, holding every grace of God, the grace of God holding every moment of heaven. Moments of heaven found in sacred space. Sacred space holding all silence. Into this silence now, Lord, we come our hearts tuned and turned toward you. We come with our hearts full or seemingly empty. We come with our hearts soft or hard. We come with our minds troubled or calm. We come to be comforted, to be challenged, to be carried just for a time. And so into the silence God asks, what are we doing here? What are we doing among those who have no voice? Among those who have been silenced? What sound will fill the silence? First, the pregnant pause of our prayer. The silence for our confession. What are we doing here, God asks, here in the injustice, amid the imbalance of the world, amid the unfairness of people's lives? What act to transform the suffering? So second into our prayer comes the content of what we bring to God this morning. Comes the content of our confession. What are you doing here in the pain? Amid your pain and others' pain, amid the brokenness of the world, what response to make whole the healing? And so third, into our prayer this morning, comes the assurance of your presence, and thus the honesty of our confession. What are you doing here, asks God. forgiving, says God. I am holding you and believing in you. Let go and let your hearts be turned. I am waiting to change your living, to whisper love into every silence, to echo truth into every lie, speak healing into every brokenness. I am forgiving, says God. Come, come and let your hearts be turned. Amen.
4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Hi everyone, it's so good to be here with you today. I hope you're all having wonderful weeks uh, with your families and your friends and enjoying this beautiful weather. Today at church, we're talking about something called reconciliation. In fact, today is called Reconciliation Sunday. Have you ever heard this word before? Do you know what? This word is kind of new to me too. I learned about this word when I was in university, so I was probably much older than many of you. But today I thought that we could talk about this word. And first, we need to talk about apologies. Have you ever hurt someone? Sometimes this happens by mistake, or sometimes even on purpose. And when you hurt someone, I bet you are probably asked to apologize. I wonder if anyone has ever apologized to you. And when this happened, I, I wonder what that felt like. Now I'd like to tell you a story, and this is a true story. And now this is the only, only just the beginning of this really long story that has many parts. In the history of Canada, the people who lived on this land were hurt by settlers. Indigenous people are the people who lived here on this land in the very beginning. And settlers are the people who came to this land after. Indigenous people were, were really very hurt by settlers. The settlers thought that this land was theirs now, and they took it away. The settlers stole many things. They made Indigenous people feel really sad and hurt. And life became very hard for many Indigenous people. After many years, years and years, the actions of the settlers still hurt Indigenous people today. Now, the word reconciliation is about this story this story that is ever-changing and that is adding new chapters every year. Reconciliation is about how Indigenous people and settlers are living with this story today. Sometimes we think reconciliation means an apology, just like the apologies that you know about. We think they are the same. But when an apology happens, does it make the hurt go away? Maybe sometimes, but not always. What I'm learning is that reconciliation is like an apology, but it has an action to make it better. So why do we talk about reconciliation in church? I'm also learning that it might be because God wants us to live in peace and to seek justice. And that's what reconciliation is all about. It's about apologizing, finding peace, and it's about seeking justice through action. And there's good news. Action has been happening all over the country in the name of reconciliation. Youth and young people are learning how important this story is. And they're making our world a better place by telling this story and by listening. We are learning that through peace and justice, we can live in a world united by love. Let us pray together. God, creator and great mystery, 
we praise you for the sacred fires that burn today and for the prayer-filled smoke that you receive and bless. We offer our deep gratitude that there's fires, light, informs and guides our journey. We pray just as the elders prayed for renewal and for restoration of beauty to the land and its people. We acknowledge the diverse and abundant gifts of Canada's Indigenous peoples. We recognize that their knowledge and wisdom have benefited generations past and present, and that this blessing will continue for gener generations to come. We remember that many who are committed to the healing of family, faith, and community, and nations. We offer this prayer in humility and hope in the name of our brother Jesus, the one who lights our path to wholeness, justice, and peace. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and I can't wait to see you next Sunday. Our Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life 
was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Christ was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the witness of the good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. Happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you so much for the generous invitation to let me come and be with your parish and community this morning. My name is Reverend Lee Kern, and I am the Reconciliation Animator in the Anglican Diocese of Toronto. I am cross-appointed to Toronto Urban Native Ministry, a joint outreach and advocacy ministry with the United Church of Canada. Toronto Urban Native Ministry is located by Dundas Square in the heart of our city. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been in emergency response mode, supporting the survival necessities of Indigenous peoples and homeless people living on the streets of Toronto. We've been engaged in frontline work. TUNM organized the first mobile COVID-19 testing for the whole city for the homeless. We've also been serving about 200 meals every day with our partner, the Church of the Holy Trinity, to those in need, and have been continuing to provide spiritual and pastoral care to those on the streets of Toronto. This work is only possible by your support of TUNM and Indigenous Ministries, and for that, we are so grateful. Gichi miigwech. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Let us praise the God of flesh. Let this sermon be a hymn to the sanctity of tenderness, the holiness of life, in praise of soft bellies, large and small, the sweetness of wild strawberries, the twisting elegance of white pine trees, and the crinkles around your eyes when you smile. Let us praise the God of flesh for trespassing our imaginations and disarming our human arrogance and hatred, reminding us of what we are made, reminding us of who designed the person next to you, reminding us of who life belongs to. Some have preached that God did not create matter, that heaviness and flesh are evil, far from the light of God, mired down in the density of creation. We once thought that God was far off, distant, but then God came crashing into our communities, crashing into the urgency of the present, 
into the mess of families and neighborhoods. God entered the trembling body of a newborn baby. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. In our gospel reading today, the incarnation of God into the frailty of flesh, the all-powerful stepping into the total vulnerability of human life, this radical dependence of a baby, this incarnational God is the God of creation. This prologue of John's gospel is a hymn against any homiletic that says God did not create all matter. No. In the beginning was the life, and that life was the light of all the worlds. This generative, unbridled first creativity. The prologues of the past help us understand the present and reinvigorate our hope for the future. Life is sacred. God is creator. Black lives matter. Indigenous children and parents are sacred. No one is disposable. The power of the racist songs that we have tuned our society to are coming undone. The streets are full of cries that life must be treasured, not trampled. Can you hear the word in flesh crying out? Our gospel today brings us back to the origins of creation. It harkens back to the book of Genesis, our Christian creation story. In darkness, the spirit hovered over the water. In black majesty, the womb of all creation, the first creativity, the living word of God spoke. In Anishinaabe creation stories of this territory, darkness is also first. Holy blackness is our first home. In Anishinaabe traditions, the first womb of life was pitch black, and the first sound heard was that of a rattle, the first seeds of life moving. Sound, pulsing, shaking, seeds scattered forth in the nighttime of creation. Walter Linstone, one of my elders, taught me that this is why babies love rattles. They are close to the creator still. They just came straight from the heart of the spirit. They remember the soothing sound of God's comforting cruise, gently sounding life into being. A lot of different stories has been told about the creator. We once thought that God was far off. We once thought that men were God, that women were evil, that people who menstruated were dirty, that trans people were a sin, that children should be punished and black people should be enslaved and indigenous people don't know the creator. But then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and disarmed us. Flesh cries out to flesh, I am sacred, full of grace and truth. The word is still active and alive. The word is regenerative, creative, calling us back continuously to the sanctity of flesh. The rhythm of soft tissues and lungs expanding is the love song of God reverberating throughout the universe. Origin stories are powerful. The stories that we tell ourselves shape our world. Colonial and imperial worldviews shape the stories and songs and policies of the places we live. The subconscious stories we tell ourselves of who matters and who doesn't. The songs we tune our minds to, the rhythms bigger than us, beyond us, that ask for our voices and hands and feet to march along to. Tunes so familiar to us that they have been playing in the background all these years yet we never noticed we knew all the words. Songs we need to unlearn. One of the first traditional indigenous songs I learned as a teenager was the Strong Women's Song. Perhaps you've heard it before yourself. It's one of the most famous indigenous songs. I first heard it when I was 16 
attending a ceremony for missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, and queer peoples. Hundreds of families gathered on College Street in front of the police station. They were holding signs with face after face of missing women, wanting answers, wanting their daughters to be considered, their cases opened, paid attention to, cared about, wanting the thousands of deaths to stop, wanting people to care. I've been going to this annual ceremony for over 15 years. And every year there are more photos, more families, more tears, and more grief. The ceremony though shows us a different song, full of grace and truth. Indigenous elders and residential school survivors lead. They speak first, they set the tone. The families of the missing and murdered are valued. They are at the center. We circle around them and we listen to them. They call for justice and action, and we listen. If only we as a culture and society followed the lead of Indigenous peoples. If only we followed the lead of the families of victims of trauma and racialized violence. If only we looked to them to shape our policies and our social structures. The Strong Women's Song, sung at memorials for missing women, is pining and resilient. The double drum beats resound, the rattles shake, and women take the lead. It is a song that I believe is reshaping our land. I'd like to share my version of this oral tradition, the story I've been told about where the Strong Women's Song comes from, the Kingston Prison for Women in the 1970s. The prison was cold. It was quiet and dark when a woman's tears broke the silence. She was in solitary confinement. There was no windows, no starlight, no moon, no sun on her face, no birds with their songs to awaken the dawn. How did she get here? Her black eyes searched the four tiny walls of the cell. She was taken first as a child taken from her mother, who she can only remember her dark eyes. The RCMP took her when she was just little. The residential school where she was sent was like this prison. No time spent outside. No one to hug her when she cried at night. Just unwelcomed hands. Firm grips, like the guards now in the prison for women in Kingston. It was pitch black in her cell. Her tears broke the silence. I'm going to kill myself, she said. What? The other women from the cell down the hall gasped through the windowless concrete walls and floor. I can't do it anymore. All I can see is the faces of my children. I miss them. They took them away from me. I shouldn't even be here. I never hurt anyone, she cried. The other women in solitary confinement started speaking back to her saying, you have something to live for. They can't lock you in here forever. You will survive. You will hold your children again. Solitary confinement was almost all indigenous women then, locked in torturous conditions, losing their minds, full, vibrant human beings stifled to four tiny walls crashing in day and night for months, for years. I'm going to kill myself, she screamed. And suddenly a voice broke louder. A voice began to sing. The song came to the women answering their sister in distress on the brink of suicide. Many elders teach that songs come from the ancestors or the spirit world. They come to the people at a particular moment in time with a particular medicine. 
The strong women's song was sung by the women in solitary confinement that whole night long until the sun rose that morning. The woman did not take her life. She survived. Many women did not survive solitary confinement or the loneliness of prison. This song is always sung to empower the living and honor the dead. Recently, the drums have come out and people have been singing that strong women's song for Chantal Moore, an indigenous mother killed last week. Judith Sayers, a member of the same First Nation as Chantal Moore and a family friend, wrote that a police officer was sent to do a wellness check on Chantal Moore because they were concerned that she was being harassed. After midnight, Chantal was in bed, sound asleep. The police arrived, knocked on her door, but Chantal doesn't hear she's asleep. They pound louder and louder. She wakes up, she grabs a knife, she's startled. The door opens. They see a short, alone, indigenous mom startled awake, holding a knife, and they shoot her five times. This is all the information that we have from the police statement. Nine Indigenous people have been shot and killed by our police or RCMP or died in their custody since the beginning of 2020. Aisha Hudson, age 16. Jason Collins, 36. Stuart Kevin Andrews, 22. Everett Patrick, 42. Abraham Nadanin, a yet to be publicly named Enoch man from Apex Nunavut. Regis Korchinsi Paquette, 29. Rodney Levi, 48. Chantal Moore, 26. Dignity and honor to their names and families. Their families, their lives are sacred and holy. Their lives were made and cherished by our creator. The, families, the family of 16-year-old Aisha Hudson have called for a national mobilization, national organizing in solidarity with the families of the Black Lives Matter movement to seriously examine what we consider to be public safety. Who is included? and excluded from that conversation? Who is protected and who feels persecuted? The pandemics of COVID-19, mass incarceration, violence against indigenous people, and extrajudicial killings of black and racialized peoples across the continent have shaken society to its core. Now is a time of grief and loss but we must lean into this vulnerability, lean into the pain and fear, for this cannot go on. We cannot continue to sing the same song. Flesh cries out to flesh, I am sacred. On the streets of our cities, the strong women's song is being sung to honor the beautiful life of Chantal Moore and so many others who deserved care, but met a scary and horrific death. Can you hear the word of life crying out? We have had to learn new songs before. We have had to reimagine, recreate, learn from the past, learn from leaders, learn a new way forward. When we are confronted with the inequities of racism in our society, we can feel paralyzed, not sure what to do. But we must move from that place of personal to the social, from a feeling of individual guilt to a sense of collective responsibility for each other. We all have a voice and gifts at the table. These times of national crisis call us to examine 
where are our collective energies going? How much of our pu publicly funded budgets go towards weapons? And how much goes to free and accessible mental health care? Our incarnational faith teaches us that the stuff of human life, our organizations, our institutions, our money, our land, these things are not separate from our faith. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word was named Jesus and was ultimately killed by a state as an innocent man. His resurrection stunned the guards and all who wished to trample on life. As a people of this reality, a reality where all life is holy, created by a loving, animating, incarnate God, especially present, especially identifying his fragile flesh with our own, identifying especially with those who have been persecuted, what you do to the least, you do to me, Jesus said. This Indigenous People's Day of Prayer, I invite you to commit to learning about and challenging embedded racism in our culture, structures, and communities. For more information on how you can personally support uh, six-year-old Gracie and the family of Chantal Moore, please see the resource kit that I have provided your community with. The resources that we have created for observing National Indigenous Peoples Day are for every day. The five sections of the resource package are learn, pray, worship with others, act, and redistribute wealth. I encourage you to sit with each of these sections and explore. Click the link to an Inuit podcast or check out the online social distance powwow. Let this new and strange time be one of creativity, a time of concrete commitments, of saying enough to violence, of turning over power to those who have been most impacted by injustice, a time to finally follow and implement the lead and leadership of the families of missing and murdered Indigenous women. Let this be a time of vulnerability and courage, a time to protect flesh, a time to enflesh our faith. Let us pray. Crucified One, as you tear down the mighty from their thrones and lift up the stomped on, enkindle our hearts with the fire of your transformation. God who shook the foundations of power with the song of a few, who opened prisons and parted the Red Sea, who raised the murdered from the dead, give us your tender heart, your courage, your creative vision, and life-giving love. Amen. See trace of Creator's hand. Through cross and pen you sought remake our names and children you did take. 
we say repent your acts, respect our voice, in our life the spirit gives. We try to make you be like us, we basket in your light. We did not heed the cries of babes, abuse the gospel's might. Of keen a quest begin across the river deep. A winner shed it was declared, joint vision they would keep. What we do not in strength and love, our children see and rise above. Let us unite our hearts. And now, as is the custom in this congregation, it is a time for the life and work of the people of this church. Next week, we will be celebrating Pride Sunday. Reverend Jason Myers will be preaching and I will be presiding. We will lament and we will remember and we will celebrate. And as is our custom for the summer, for July and August, we will be moving to simpler services. I will be with you in July and Jason will be with you in August. We are taking our timing for reopening month to month. And so we will continue with online services for the month of July. A decision will be made regarding August at the next board meeting. In any event, when we do return to the sanctuary, we will be continuing our online services as well. Now in this time of social distancing and forced separation from one another, we are blessed to be able to connect in this manner. The life and the work of the church of course continues and across your screen will come ways to make your contribution continue to make your contribution or begin to make your contribution so that we may continue to be a force for good and for healing at the corner of church and queen in downtown toronto thanks be to god let us now affirm our faith together with the words of a new creed we are not alone we live in god's world we believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. As we struggle through these dark, tumultuous times and seek re reconciliation, I am drawn to hear the land speak its truth. The wisdom of our ancestors has led me to this prayer on a rock on Tabor Hill near my home for this beautiful solstice sunrise. O great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all, all the world, hear me. I am a man before you, one of your many children. I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunsets. Make my hands respect the things you have made, my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so I may know the things you have taught my people, the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, O Creator, not to be superior to my brothers, but to be able to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me ever ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eye, 
so that when life fades as the setting sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame. Creator, Spirit, Comforter, Advocate, we greet you this day with gratitude for the blessings of our lives and for the blessing of the people of our community. Hear now the prayers of our people. We pray especially this morning for the original peoples of this land. Our ancestors in this place agreed to share these sacred lands. Help us learn how to live with respect of these sacred lands and of all creation. Help us to restore broken covenants with the original peoples of this land and with all of your creation. Help us to listen, to hear, to act wisely. We lift up all people for healing comfort and your compassion. Today we are thinking of those who are ill, those who are grieving, those longing for companionship in hospital, long-term care, or seniors' residences. We ask you to watch over and comfort those forced out of their homes during this pandemic and those who had no home. We pray for the missing and murdered women, young girls, men and boys of your people, and the victims of all injustice and racism in our world these days and always. May they be wrapped in your arms of comfort. May we keep their stories alive through our actions and advocacy so that they can guide us to a more just and safe way of being. We pray for the families of the missing and murdered that they receive comfort in their loss. We pray for the allies and advocates who fight against the injustices. We pray they have your compassionate ear. We pray for strength and endurance for them. We pray just as the elders prayed, for renewal and for the restoration of beauty to this land and its people, for the health of all nations and all persons during this pandemic time, and for our safety as we broaden our activities and our communities. And we pray for Mother Earth, the waters, the winds, for our siblings, the animals, birds, and fish, and all of life that surrounds us. We offer this prayer in humility and hope, and in the name of our brother Jesus, the one who lights our path to wholeness, justice, and peace, and who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
in the name of all that is good and true and honorable and just, go to love and to serve, go to serve and to heal, go to heal and to love. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. of Christ be with you. May the love of God dwell in your heart. May the Spirit and light be your way.